The only thing we require to be good philosophers is the sense of wonder.
our kitchen. Hey, Mum, say something philosophical. Sophie, what are you doing? I'm making a video to send online. Oh, not that Alberto again. No, for another philosopher I met. Well, whoever it is, I just don't trust these cyberspace people. They're not natural. It is through questions that we will learn to understand, so I have a riddle for you. Visit the Athens of antiquity. You are virtually there. We are traveling to the old Agora in Athens. In this very place walked Socrates, Plato, and Aristotle. Discover them for yourself. like some lovely eggs. You can do so much with them. They've got incredible potential recommended by Aristotle himself. They're just so versatile. That's because they're made of two special things, see? They've got form and they've got substance. Allow me to demonstrate. 
Now, here we have an egg. It's made of an egg substance, and it's in egg form. But potentially, it could have, say, fried form. Or, taste the omelette form. And sometimes, an egg can even undergo a transformation into chicken form. See what I mean? All that potential, it's magic. It is 402 BC. You are about to meet Socrates and Meno personally. I would describe virtue as desiring fine things and being able to acquire them. You're now saying that virtue is the ability to acquire fine things. I am, like getting gold or silver and a high position in government. Would you add that these things must be obtained justly or would it still be virtue even when someone gets them unjustly? Of course not, Socrates. So it seems that whatever is done justly will be virtue, and whatever isn't will be vice. I agree. And we said that each of these things, justice, courage, temperance, and the others, is a part of virtue. Yes. But do you think anyone can know a part of virtue when they don't know what virtue is itself? No, I don't. So, let's start again. Tell me what virtue is. Socrates, I was told before I met you that you were a doubter who made others doubt as well. well. Now I find that you have twisted me around your finger and I don't know what to think at all. <laughs> Socrates, you are accused of heresy and corrupting the youth of the city. We condemn you to death. Oh, very well, my good man, since you're the one who knows all about this, tell me, what should I do? When you have drunk it, walk around until your legs become heavy, then lie down and it will do the rest. Oh, really, my friends, what a performance. I am told one should bring one's life to a solemn close in silence. Oh, things are heavy. Oh. Can you feel that? No. Can you feel this? No. The coldness is spreading. When it reaches his heart, he will die. Oh, Crito, we owe the god Aesculapius a cockerel. See to it. Don't forget.
As you can see, our house is quite big. In fact, it seems too big when Dad's away. We'll have my birthday party down here. It's more fun outside, because you don't have to worry about making a mess. In this painting by Leonardo da Vinci, there is a point where all the lines of perspective converge. Can you locate this vanishing point? Welcome to the Theatre of Life, Sophie. Do you want to come up onto the stage with the other performers, or would you rather watch from the audience? I think I'll just watch a show, if you don't mind. Well, even in the crowd, 
you may feel someone is watching you, for we are, each of us, under the greatest surveillance of all. Am I, Chuan Tzu, dreaming I am a butterfly? Am I a butterfly, dreaming I'm Chuan Tzu? Get ready. Sight. Sound. Touch. Smell. Taste. Sight. Sound. Touch. Smell. Taste.
there's nothing there. It's all a bad dream. Birthday, Sophie. I think I'm still alive. Of course you're alive. It's your birthday. Are you sure this isn't all a dream? It must be a pretty good dream to wake up to birthday presents. Sophie, are you all right? I've no idea. I don't know what to think at all. Recognizing the limits of what you can think is the finest virtue a philosopher can have. We are starting right now from scratch. It may turn out we are just thoughts, which is very different from thinking. But if it's true that we're purely imaginary, we have no right to believe anything at all. This telephone call isn't really happening, and it might as well hang up now. No. Now you are oversimplifying things. Explain it, then. It's not that we don't exist. The question is not whether we are, but who we are and what we are. Even if it turns out we are merely electronic impulses, that need not take our little piece of existence away from us. There are free will. I'm working on that, Sophie. of going on. I'm not real. You're not real. Is there anything here at all that's real? The only thing I know to be real is the Major. And we're just fictional characters in his fantasy. Well, that's a thought-provoking thesis, Sophie. But what you are proposing is terribly negative. In some respects, the Major himself is no more real than we are. Now what are you trying to tell me? Are you suggesting that you and I are real? And the Major's a figment of the imagination. I couldn't have put it better myself. You have just expressed my antithesis, which directly opposes your original gloomy view of our existence, or the lack of it. What are you talking about? Hegel thought that every idea or thesis gives rise to an opposing antithesis. Tension grows between the two. And the argument can only be resolved by merging the opposing ideas into a third proposal. This synthesis is a sort of compromise that incorporates the best aspects of both. 
So what is synthesis for us? Well, Hegel believed that everything in the universe was worthless, unreal and false unless considered as part of a greater whole. Your eyes, for example, let you look at the world around you. But plucked out, they are useless blobs of jelly. So using the same argument on the major, he is real only if we consider him as one part of a greater whole. Yes, as a part of a higher mind or world spirit that has created not only the digital world in which you and I exist, but also the major himself. What about this other higher mind? Could that just be a creation of some even greater mind? That is a possibility, Sophie, a definite possibility. What if you slept? And what if in your sleep you dreamed? And what if in your dream you went to heaven and there plucked a strange and beautiful flower? And what if when you awoke you had the flower in your hand? Ah, what then? I don't like it here, Hansel. I want to leave. Gretel, how many times do I have to tell you? Whether we stay in the forest or leave is not our decision. We're just characters in somebody else's fairy tale. We are helpless parts of the great world spirit, which embraces all human life and knowledge and culture. Besides, I like it here. It makes me feel at one with everything. More of your romantic claptrap! If everybody took Hegel's ideas as literally as you do, nobody would ever do anything! You've got no individuality, have you? Well, I've had enough. I'm sick of living in a fairy tale. I want to live my own life where and how I please. Well, I'm going deeper into the forest to become totally absorbed by nature. And if you had any sense, you choose to come too. Choose to? What do you know about choice? If you leave with me, you might find out about Kierkegaard. Then you would understand understand what choice really is. I'm telling you, Hansel, anybody would be mad to choose your way when they could choose mine. We may be out of the woods, but we haven't yet broken free of the Major's mind. I'm really sick of this. It's like a police state, with faceless officials controlling everything. Do we even know whose rules are following? It makes me so angry. I think we should find out who's running this virtual dictatorship and get rid of them. Oh, careful now, Sophie. I'm not sure that violence is the solution. <laughs> You're no help. We'll be crushed unless we stick together. Those who are operating the system have become corrupt, brothers and sisters. They treat us like robots, monitoring our every move. These virtual societies are nothing but dictatorships ruled by a select few. The struggle for representation that man has fought for for hundreds of years has come to nothing. We are back fighting for a few basic liberties. We must infiltrate the system and take direct Action. Take complete control. No point tinkering with a few lines of code. We've endured this top-down approach for too long. We demand that everyone be treated equally, nothing less. The only way to achieve these revolutionary aims is by armed struggle.
I don't open my door to just anyone. There are some violent characters around here. Mankind has a history of violence and destruction, but today I believe a more peaceful approach is needed if we are to avoid extinction. Don't you agree? Well, with an attitude like that, I don't hold out much chance for your future survival. You'd better come in and discover that to exist in society, we have to repress certain behavior and to adhere to certain authority. What's all this about? Some of the Major's thoughts. You must remember, Sophie, that we are figments of his imagination. Are we stuck inside his mind forever? No, there is a way out. There are parts of the mind where ideas seem to have a life of their own. Somewhere within the Major's subconscious, there is the source of our inspiration. We must learn to read between the lines, Sophie. <laughs> I appreciate your frustration, Major, but the UN simply doesn't have the power to control the situation. We can't play God here. We have no doubt of your technical capability with computers, Nag. We're just concerned that this job may not suit your creative needs. We understand you're a bit of a writer. I found the written word did not effectively suit my purposes. Now, I'm far more interested in logical systems. In that case, welcome to the Defense Department. Look, Albert, I've read this paper of yours, From Stardust to Silicon, and they're very imaginative, your theories about universes, consciousness, and creativity, but uh, it doesn't really constitute a credible work. We need something more epistemic. Perhaps you should reconsider an academic career. If people would only think... You're not still trying to sting us all into life, are you, Nag? Some people just aren't brought up to be philosophers. Well, that's the problem, isn't it? If we just looked at things from a broader perspective, then all these petty differences might pale into insignificance. How did the world get here? It happened with a big bang. All the matter in the universe was packed into one place so tightly that it became very hot and exploded, spreading stardust through space. When this cooled down, it formed stars, planets, and everything on them. Even us. Yes, 
But it wasn't until 15 billion years later that human life first appeared. I appreciate your frustration, Major, but the UN simply doesn't have the power to control the situation. We can't play God here. But I asked you to draw the solar system. What are all of these funny things? The magic things that make it work. The universe doesn't work by magic, Albert. Now, if you want to learn, will you please copy what I've drawn on the board and stop this? We have no doubt of your technical capability with computers, Nag. We're just concerned that this job may not suit your creative needs. We understand you're a bit of a writer. I found the written word did not effectively suit my purposes. Now I'm far more interested in logical systems. In that case, welcome to the Defence Department. Daddy, what am I made of? Stardust. Is that for me, Dad? Yes, Hildy. What is it? It's a puzzle, but it's rather an unusual puzzle. Why? Because even when you've finished it, there's still another piece to add. That's called a paradox, Hildy, and you'll be encountering many of those as you grow up. Still another piece to add. That's called a paradox. Delighted you could make it. And so, as is philosophies won't, we have come full circle. I'm sure that in your search to find the answers to life's big questions, you will have learned by now that philosophy is simply a network of interconnecting loops and circles. There really is no greater truth to find. There is no meaning behind existence. Philosophy is just an amusement, a distracting walk around the block. Well, it's time for a new direction. I created you and this program as an experiment. Well, this program is now complete, and I have other projects to run. It's time to terminate this creation of mine. Uh, no! You can't do that! What's going to happen to us? More questions! Are you still blinded by this obsession with pointless questions, Sophie? Obviously, you haven't learned that there really is nothing to learn. As this is your final philosophy lesson, I have invited a few eminent thinkers to try and explain this to you. Man is nothing other than what he makes of himself. Whereas it is required of woman that in order to realize her femininity, she must make herself both object 
and pray. Do we, in our time, have an answer to the question of what we really mean by the word being? No, not at all. Being is a mere word, naming nothing. What philosophers say about reality is often as disappointing as a sign you see in a shop window which reads, Pressing done here. If you brought your clothes to be pressed, you would be fooled, for only the sign is for sale. The life of man is of no more importance to the universe than that of an oyster. There are no facts, only interpretations. OK, that's enough. Your little show doesn't fool me for a second. You can't just brush philosophy into the wastebasket. And I don't believe you have any intention of doing so. Really? Well, I'm dying to know. How can you be so certain of this? You may not have the answers. But that doesn't mean you can do away with philosophical questions. It's an inescapable part of your psyche to ask yourself these questions. You wouldn't have been able to make all this otherwise. Philosophy is part of you. You can't get rid of it. And Sophie and I are part of you. You can't get rid of us either. You seem very sure of my philosophical nature. I could be made of much harder stuff than you make out. Major, I think you're mistaken. You forget I've journeyed through your subconscious and seen the very roots of your creativity. You'll never stop asking yourself philosophical questions, and if you had your way, nor would anyone else. I know exactly what kind of stuff you think you're made of. You think everybody's made of it. Oh, do I? Yes, and they know as well. Well, please tell me, what is this stuff? I think we're all made from. Is this the end? Not for us. A true philosopher must never give up.